Well, let's go ahead and we'll just uh, begin. And we're glad for those of you that are on and glad for some others that we are expecting to still hop on. Hopefully that will all work out. We're gonna just do a little break. Like one of the things we like to do with the Workplace Network is just take a little pause break, especially in the busyness of Christmas and just pause. And so today we're kind of gonna have a little story time, but focusing in on the real true meaning of Christmas. And the question we start off with with this story is, what do you love most about Christmas? My kids tell me presents. And probably we will laugh and try to say something more spiritual. Uh, but actually, do you know what? The kids are right. Mm -hmm. I like snowball fights, make the snowman, presents. I like the presents and my family and friends all coming together. That is the best, most important thing about Christmas. Because you see, Christmas is all about a present, a gift, the greatest, most magnificent gift there has ever been. And Christmas is really hard to, to wait for, isn't it? Um, waiting to open all those presents for people like me, that's really difficult. And especially when you're really little <laughs> and we count down the days and we can't wait. And, but do we know how long God's people had to wait for Christmas? how long they had to wait for the gift God promised them? Weeks? No, not weeks, Doug. Months? Longer? Years. And then even longer than that, they had to wait for centuries and centuries. And if we think for a moment, can we actually imagine how excited they were when at last Christmas came? When do you think Christmas actually begins? Does it begin in Bethlehem or with the angel Gabriel visiting Mary? Or does it begin with a bright star shining on a little stable? Actually, the story of Christmas begins long, long ago, before there were even any stars in the sky at all. Christmas begins in the heart of God. And back in the very beginning, God had a magnificent dream inside his heart, and he made his children, us, to share in his forever happiness, and the world to be our perfect home. But we lost it all when we decided we didn't need him, when we decided we could be happy without him, and everything broke in our hearts and in his world when sin and sadness and tears came in. But God had a plan. He had a magnificent dream. And one day he would get his children back. One day he himself would come to rescue them and to heal their broken hearts. And one day he promised Christmas would come. All through the Bible, all through the long years, God had been waiting exactly for the right time to send his great gift. He has been waiting for Christmas. And from the moment Adam and Eve left the garden, he whispered the promise, it will not always be so. To Abraham, he promised one day a child will come to bring laughter to the world. He promised Joseph, David, Isaiah, one day he will send a good shepherd, a brave hero, a young prince, a mighty king, a great rescuer, a child. And every story in the Old Testament whispers his name. Christmas is when, at last, everything is ready. The time has come, at last, for God to give this great gift. And we have entered into the season of Advent. And today, our hearts are here to pause and to reflect more through the eyes and wonder of a child. After all, isn't that what the Christmas story is really all about? The child who came to save the world? Emmanuel, 
Operation No More Tears. Do you know what your name means? Well, there was once a man named Isaiah, and his name meant God to the rescue. Well, that might sound a bit funny to name somebody a name like that, but it was just the right name for Isaiah because God had a very special job for him. You see, I, Isaiah's job was to listen to God and then tell people what he heard. Now, God let Isaiah know a secret. God was going to mend this broken world. He showed Isaiah his secret rescue plan, Operation No More Tears. This is the message that God gave Isaiah. It was a bit like a letter written to his children. Dear little flock, you're all wandering away from me like sheep in an open field. You always have been running away from me and now you're lost. You can't find your way back, but I can't stop loving you. I will come to find you. So I'm sending you a shepherd to look after you and love you, to carry you home to me. You've been stumbling around like people in a dark room, but into the darkness, a bright light will shine. It will chase away all the shadows like sunshine. A little baby will be born, a royal son. His mummy will be a young girl who doesn't have a husband. His name will be Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us, the Prince of Peace. Yes. Someone is going to come and rescue you, but he won't be who anyone expects. He will be a king, but he won't live in a palace, and he won't have lots of money. He will be poor, and he will be a servant, but this king will heal the world. He will be a hero. He will fight for his people and rescue them from their enemies, but he won't have big armies, and he won't fight with swords. He will make the blind see. He will make the lame leap like deer. He will make everything the way it was always meant to be. But people will hate him and they won't listen to him. He will be like a lamb. He will suffer and die. It's the secret rescue plan we made from before the beginning of the world. It's the only way to get you back. But he won't stay dead. I will make him alive again. And one day, when he comes back to rule forever, the mountains and trees will dance and sing for joy. The earth will shout out loud. His fame will be full of the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. Even death is going to die. And he will wipe away every tear from every eye. Yes, the rescuer will come. Look for him. Watch for him. Wait for him. He will come. I promise. Love God. Now, poor Isaiah. He read God's letter over and over to God's people. But no one listened to him at all, ever. They didn't want to hear God's promise. They didn't believe it. Maybe it sounded good, too good to be true. A story that ends happily ever after? Well, it does kind of sound like a fairy tale, doesn't it? And as anyone will quickly tell you, fairy tales aren't true. Or are they? In this moment, we're just going to pause and each one of us quietly just give thanks to God for this promise of hope. We'll just spend 30, well, 15 seconds. Thank you for hope. Amen. Spring.
he's here. Everything was ready. The moment God had been waiting for was here at last. God was coming to help his people, just as he promised in the beginning. But how would he come? What would he be like? What would he do? Mountains would have bowed down, seas would have roared, trees would have clapped their hands, but the earth held its breath. As silent as snow falling, he came in. And when no one was looking, in the darkness he came. There was a young girl who was engaged to a man named Joseph. Joseph was the great, 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 great grandson of King David. One morning, this girl was minding her own business when suddenly a great warrior of light appeared right there in her bedroom. He was Gabriel and he was an angel, a special messenger from heaven. When she saw the tall shining man standing there, Mary was frightened. You don't need to be scared, Gabriel said. God is very happy with you. Mary looked around to see if perhaps he was talking to someone else. Mary, Gabriel said, and he laughed with such gladness that Mary's eyes filled with sudden tears. Mary, you're going to have a baby, a little boy. You will call him Jesus. He's God's own son. He's the one. He's the rescuer. The God who flung planets into space and kept them whirling around and around. The God who made the universe with just a word. The one who could do anything at all was making himself small and coming down as a baby. Wait, God was sending a baby to rescue the world? But it's too wonderful, Mary said. She felt her heart beating hard. How can it be true? Is anything too wonderful for God? Gabriel asked. So Mary trusted God more than what her eyes could see. And she believed. I'm God's servant, she said. Whatever God says, I will do. Sure enough, it was just as the angel had said. Nine months later, Mary was almost ready to have a baby. Now Mary and Joseph had to take a trip to Bethlehem the town King David was from. But when they reached the little town, they found every room was full. Every bed was taken. Go away, the innkeepers told them. There isn't any place for you. Where should they stay? Soon Mary's baby would come. They couldn't find anywhere except an old tumble-down stable. So they stayed where the cows and the donkeys and the horses stayed. And there in the stable, Amongst the chickens and the donkeys and the cows, in the quiet of the night, God gave the world his wonderful gift. The baby that would change the world was born, his baby son. Mary and Joseph wrapped him up to keep him warm. They made a soft bed of straw and used the animal's feeding trough as his cradle. And they gazed in wonder at God's great gift, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, Mary and Joseph named him Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us because, of course, he had. We'll pause now for about 15 or 20 seconds and just thank God for Emmanuel, this gift of love. Father, thank you for sending us the gift of love, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. And death's dark shadows put to fly. Oh, come thou king of David, come and open wide our heaven. Same night, amongst the other stars, suddenly a bright new star appeared. Of all the stars in the dark vaulted heavens, this one shone clearer. 
It blazed in the night and made the other stars look pale beside it. God put it there when his baby son was born to be a spotlight shining on him, lighting up the darkness, showing people the way to him. You see, God was like a new daddy. He couldn't keep the good news to himself. He, was, uh, he had been waiting all those long years for this moment. Now he wanted to tell everyone. So we pulled out all the stops. He'd sent an angel to tell Mary the good news. He's put a special star in the sky where his boy was. And he was going to send a big choir of angels to sing his happy song to the world. He's here. He's come. Go and see him, my little boy. Now, where would you send your splendid choir? To a big concert hall, maybe? Or a palace, perhaps? God sent him to a little hillside, outside a little town, in the middle of the night. He sent all those angels to sing for a raggedy old bunch of shepherds watching their sheep outside Bethlehem. In those days, remember, people used to laugh at shepherds and say they were smelly and call them other rude names. You see, people thought shepherds were nobodies, just scruffy old riffraff. But God must have thought shepherds were very important indeed because they're the ones he chose to tell the, the good news to first. That night, some shepherds were out in the open fields, warming themselves by a campfire when suddenly the sheep darted. They were frightened by something. The olive trees rustled. What was that? A wing beat. They turned around. Standing in front of them was a huge warrior of light, blazing in the darkness. Don't be afraid of me, the bright shining man said. I haven't come to hurt you. I've come to bring you happy news for everyone everywhere. Today, in David's town, in Bethlehem, God's son has been born. You can go and see him. He is sleeping in a manger. Behind the angel, they saw a strange glowing cloud. Except it wasn't a cloud. It was angels, troops and troops of angels, armed with light. And they were singing a beautiful song. Glory to God. To God be fame and honor and all hoorays. Then as quickly as they, they appeared, the angels left. The shepherds stamped out their fire, left their sheep, raced down the grassy hill, through the gates of Bethlehem, down the narrow cobbled streets, through a courtyard, down the steps, past an inn, round a corner, through a hedge, until at last they reached a tumbled stable, tumble down stable. They caught their breath, then quietly they tiptoed inside, knelt on the dirt floor. They had heard about this promised child, and now he was here. Heaven's son, the maker of the stars, a baby sleeping in his mother's arms. This baby would be like that bright star shining in the sky, in the sky that night. A light the light up the whole world, chasing away the darkness, helping people to see. And the darker the night got, the brighter the star would shine. So now again, we'll pause for 15 or 20 seconds and individually in the quiet of our place, just give thanksgiving for this gift of joy, the light of the world has come. Father, thank you for giving us this wonderful gift, the gift of light, the gift of joy, the gift of Jesus. King of all kings, far away in the east, three clever men saw the very same star. 
the star that God had put in the sky when Jesus was born. They knew it was a sign. A baby king had been born. They had been waiting for this star. They knew it would come. He's here, they shouted. He's here. And I'm sure if you'd been there, you would have heard them laughing and dancing and singing until the sun came up. At dawn, they packed up their camels and wrapped gifts for the baby. They brought their most precious treasures of all, frankincense, gold, and myrrh. Special, sparkly, lovely smelling, gleaming things just for the king. The three wise men, actually, if you'd met them, you'd have thought that they were kings themselves because they were so rich and clever and important looking. They set off. They rolled their camels across endless deserts, up steep, steep mountains, down into deep, deep valleys, through raging rivers, over grassy plains, night and day and day and night for hours that turned into days, that turned into weeks, that turned into months and months until at last they reached Jerusalem. Jerusalem was by far the most important city for miles around. And as anyone can tell you, that's where a palace would be and kings are born in palaces. So that's where they went but they were in for a surprise. They went to see King Herod. Surely he'd know where this baby was, but he didn't. In fact, he didn't like the sound of a new king. It made him cross. He didn't want anyone to be king except him. But Herod's advisors told the three wise men what was written in their books, what God had said about the baby king. Go to Bethlehem, that's where you'll find him. Suddenly, the star they had seen in the east started moving again and showing them the way. So the three wise men followed the star out of the big city along the road into the little town of Bethlehem. They followed the star through the streets of Bethlehem out of the nice part of town through the not so nice part of town down a little dirt track until it stopped right over a little house. But wait. It wasn't a palace and there weren't any guards or servants or flags or red carpets or trumpets or anything. Did they get it wrong or was it this what God meant? Sure enough, in that little house, there sitting on his mother's knee, they found him, the baby king. The three men knelt before the little king. They took off their rich royal turbans and gleaming golden crowns. They bowed their noble heads to the ground and gave him their sparkling treasures. The journey that had begun so many centuries before had led three wise men here to a little town, to a little house, to a little child, to the king, the king that God had promised David all those years before. But this child was a new kind of king. Though he was the prince of heaven, he had become poor. Though he was the mighty God, he had become a helpless baby. This king hadn't come to be the boss. He had come to be a servant. Oh, come. Let us worship Christ the Lord. Counselor, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace the greatest present of all, the gift of love of God to us. You know, the kids talking about presents, what's the best thing about Christmas? Their perspective really does show us that that really is the greatest gift, is this gift of God to us. I want to thank Sally Lloyd-Jones for writing this in a great little format of a book. We'll bring this up a little bit later. Just thank her for the Jesus Storybook Bible that we base this out of. A child's view of the Christmas story. We want to thank Rebecca, Rebecca Van Oppen and Rui Ramos with helping with our readings today. Mostly we want to thank everybody that's on this call and we'll be watching it later. We want to thank you for the ministry that you do 
where God has placed you in the marketplace, in the workplace, wherever it may be, be encouraged that you are where you should be. From Jennifer, Johan, John, and myself, we just want to wish you a very Merry Christmas filled with peace and rest. Seize the moments when you can. And we trust and hope that we will see you at the summit, January 19, 2022. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining us. Every blessing of the season upon you. Thank you. Bye-bye.